Welcome everyone to the tutorial for Xbox factoring. This will be the last method of, of factoring that we'll cover this chapter for factoring out a quadratic. Um, in order for us to be able to factor using the Xbox method, we first need to identify and kind of address what the X means. So it's a pre-required skill that we have to be able to do before we get to the actual factoring portion of Xbox. So for a standard form equation, we know that's AX squared plus BX plus C. The X in Xbox, kind of a puzzle for us to figure out that'll give us two really important numbers to help us in being able to factor out my polynomial. So in my X, this is just, you can just draw an X on your page, do a little X here, and there's four numbers that I have in Xbox, in, in the X. I have a number on top and bottom, and then left and right. The top and bottom numbers come from the expression that I'm given. So this top number is the product of my first and my last numbers. So the coefficient on x squared and the constant. So a times c, whatever that number is, goes up top. My bottom number is just my middle. So whatever is attached to my x for the coefficient, my b term, that just goes right in there. And what you have to do then is try and figure out for the two numbers on the side, what two numbers multiply together to give me my top number, but that add up to my bottom number. So let's take a look at one, what one would look like. So for the expression x squared minus, sorry, plus 9x plus 20, my top is uh, my first term times my last term, so my a times my c, in this case, positive 20. My bottom number is just my middle, so my b term is 9. So now I'm trying to work backwards to figure out what two numbers multiply together to give me 20, but add up to 9. So here should be pretty easy for us to see that it's 5 and 4, but if it's something more difficult, you can always write out a list of factors, kind of similar to how we did for a regular two parentheses factoring method. So, like I had addressed earlier, this is a guaranteed way for us to be able to factor a quadratic equation. There's no guesswork necessary. So it's going to be really useful for us to be able to factor using the Xbox method. If it's something we're really just really stuck on, if you've got a number, especially if there's a, a number that's not just one for your A value, where those are going to be kind of trickier to factor using two parentheses method, this is going to help us with that. So the actual factoring method, the way that you actually factor using Xbox. Um, I'm not going to restate what we just talked about for my X method. It's the same thing. We're going to start with that for a given problem. And again, we're looking for the two numbers that add up to the product of A and C that add up to B. So once you have those two numbers, the X of, uh, sorry, the box of X box is like box multiplication, like rectangular multiplication we did early in the chapter, where I know what the factors are on the outside, I can multiply them together and get my product on the inside. But now we don't know what the, pro the factors are. We're trying to figure out the, what those are. So we're going to fill in the information on the inside first and work backwards to figure out the outside of my box. So in the box itself, my first term and my last term are always the top left and the bottom right square in my box, respectively. So the top left is first, bottom right is last. The other two squares are from those two numbers from your x that you figured out, those two side numbers in your x. So mx and nx are going to be only our two squares. From here, we're going to have to try and work backwards to find what factors are on the outside of my box. So one method of doing this, you can just take for every row or for every column in your box, find the GCF, the greatest common factor, of those two boxes. And you can do that all the way around. So if you really liked the GCF method, you can just go ahead and do that. If you didn't, I'll explain in a little bit kind of how my brain operates and what I do in order to be able to work backwards. I kind of turn it into a logic puzzle so that I can find what the factors are without having to do four separate GCF problems for those that don't like that method. So let's take a look at what it will actually look like with x squared minus 3x minus 10. So I'm going to start with my x, first times last, my a times my c, that goes up top to negative 10, and my b value goes in the bottom, negative 3. So now we have to figure out what two numbers multiply together to give me negative 10, but add up to a negative 3. So here, a little trickier than what we've seen so far, because my product is negative, so I have to make sure one of my factors is negative, one of them is positive, in order to get a negative number when I multiply them together. So here, with a little thinking, we see that negative 5 times 2 gives me negative 10, but negative 5 plus 2 gives me negative 3. So now going to my box, 
I'm going to go ahead and put my first and my last terms in there, just like we talked about before. x squared at the top left, negative 10 bottom right. And now for my other two squares, I'm going to put in negative 5x and 2x into those other two boxes. It doesn't matter which side you put them on. If you would do the negative 5 top right or bottom left, your, your outside of the box will still be the same once you combine them together. So now this is where, depending on how your brain likes to operate, you're going to go ahead and start by taking some GCFs. It doesn't matter which where, anywhere you start. You can start with your top row or your left column or anywhere you want. So I'm going to pick out two boxes, two combinations. In this case, I want to start my top row, so my x squared and negative 5x. They have an x in common. That would be their GCF. So I know that the left outside of my box has to be an x because those two have that x in common. If I continue, my left column, my x squared and 2x, they also have x in common. So I have two of my four factors already figured out. So from here, this is where it's going to differ depending on how your brain likes to operate. So depending on if you like GCF or not. If you like GCF or not, you can continue doing what I just did with the right column and with the bottom row. So you can look at negative 5x and 10, negative 10, and recognize that they have a negative 5 in common. And the bottom row, they have a 2 in common. And just kind of keep going that way. The other way that you can do this, the way that my brain kind of does this, sees this, I look at, all right, well, if I've got an x on the outside on my left side of the box, x times what would give me a negative 5x? And again, we should come to the same conclusion that negative 5 is the number that should be out there because I know for the intersection of those two things, their product is in the box. So x times negative 5 is the only way I'm going to get a negative 5x. And the same thing down here. x times only 2, positive 2, is going to get me 2x. But you could reach the same conclusion if you're doing the GCF method as well. So it's really your personal preference, whichever one you like best. So now we have x minus 5 up top, x and positive 2, so x plus 2 on the left side. So my two factors of x squared minus 3x minus 10 are x minus 5 and x plus 2. So why don't we go ahead and try this one on your own. So try x squared plus 4x minus 12. Now that you've had a chance to do that, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of talk through this real quick. So now again, negative 12 is their product, 4 is their sum. So 6 and negative 2 should be my two factors. So if I go to the box in my x box, x squared and negative 12, top left, bottom right, 6x, negative 2x are my other two squares. So they have x in common for my top, my top row, x in common for my left column positive 6, and negative 2 are my other outside squares. So x minus 2 and x plus 6 are my two factors. Now again, if you look at this, it seems like a lot of extra work for a problem that looks like this, where we could just definitely do regular old school two parentheses factoring. And I totally agree. If I had a problem like this, where my lead coefficient is still just 1, I would not choose to do Xbox method, because two parentheses factoring is a lot quicker, a lot more efficient. Where it does come in useful is where we have a problem where you have a lead coefficient that's not just 1. So in this case, if we look at this problem, 3x squared minus 13x minus 10, this negative or this 3 on the outside gives us some issue when we try and do two parentheses factoring. It makes it a lot more challenging for us to figure out, well, is which parenthesis is 3x for my first term? Which one is x? What combination does it be, was it do? And this especially gets even more complicated when you have something that's not just 3. Maybe you have something like a 12 where it has more than just two numbers that multiply together to give you your product. So this is where I find Xbox factoring the most useful. The process here does not change, even though I have a number that's attached to my x squared. So I'm still going to start by doing a times c up top. So 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. My middle term is still the bottom of my x, so negative 13. And now again, we're looking at negative 30 as being their product, negative 13 as their sum. So again, you can go through that list of factors. We should come to the conclusion that negative 15 times 2 is negative 30, and negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So now, again, I'm going to go over to my, my box for Xbox factoring. My first and last terms are still my bottom and my top left and my bottom right boxes. So 3x squared and negative 10 
Again, those are from the original expression. So don't get confused and try putting negative 30 in here for my 3x squared. That multiplication is only for the x portion. Once you go to the box, it's back to the original terms. The other two squares here, one of them should be a negative 15x, one of them should be a 2x. And again, it doesn't matter personal preference on where you put those. So now again, we're going to go ahead and pick a column or a row, find what their GCF is between those two. So if one sticks out to you, like here, if you if you can see that 3x squared and negative 15x have a 3x in common, start with that one, which is what I see when I look at this problem. I see that they have a 3 in common for the coefficients and an x in common for their variables. Which means, from here, I only have to do one GCF problem. Once I know that this outside dimension is 3x, I know this one has to be x because x times 3x is the only thing that gives me 3x squared. And then I kind of continue along the rest of my box. I know that 3x times negative 5 is going to give me negative 15x. x times 2 is going to give me 2x. And I can just verify negative 5 times positive 2 does give me that negative 10 I need in my bottom right box. All right, so let's get, oh yeah, sorry, finishing off our problem. Why wouldn't we find our answer? My dimensions then would be 3x plus 2, since that's the left side of my box, and x minus 5, since that's the top side of my box. So those are my two factors of that expression. So again, I want you to give one of these a try. I want you to give one a try that has a lead coefficient that's not 2. So if you need to pause the video, go ahead and do so, but try this one on your own. 2x squared minus 5x minus 7. So now that you've gotten a chance to take a look at those, my product for my first and my last are negative 14. Negative 5 is my middle term. So my two sides should be negative 7 and 2. So filling in my box, 2x squared, negative 7x, 2x, and negative 7. So here, for a lot of us, we might even recognize right away, because of how you arrange these, that this right column has negative 7 in common, my left column has 2x in common, and you can start with both of those right away. You know that one of your factors then has to be 2x minus 7. So, however you, whatever order you went in, either way, you should come to the conclusion that 2x minus 7 times x plus 1 is my final factorization. So that's just a brief example. Um, we're going to go ahead and skip over this last one. Um, if you want to challenge yourself and, and take a second and go back and pause it before I was able to skip through this, um, you can go ahead and, and do that. So we should get to the conclusion here for a 15x squared plus 7x minus 2, that 3x plus 2 and 5x minus 1 should be my final factorizations. Now, with, as everything else, anytime we're doing a problem in math, anytime you have the time for it, anytime you have the opportunity for it, you should be checking your answer. And here, if we're checking our answer, just like with every other factoring problem, that just means multiplying those two parentheses out. So refoiling those two, those, those two parentheses together to make sure that what you started with is your answer. So after you've gone through and factored them out, if you multiply those two parentheses back together, you should start back with, or go back to what you started with. So again, make sure you're doing that when you guys get to the homework tonight. Let me know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching.